With Nervalette and Kazuha being available, you might be seriously tempted to pull on the banner. And I don't blame you. But there's a small problem. Your premium gem count is lower than my IQ, and not even doing your commissions will get you enough for one pull. Lucky for you, I have a great way you can buy Prima Gems at a discount. Loot Bar is 100% safe and only requires your Genshin UID to purchase Genesis Crystals. Normally, the price for me to buy 6,480 Crystals is $100, but you can see here how Loot Bar has reduced the price to about $85, and if you're a new user, you get an additional 5% off. The way it works is that Loot Bar tops up your account through the official channel with Hoyoverse. After making a purchase, you can expect to receive it in 30 minutes or less. In my case, I received mine in just about 5 minutes. Another comforting thing about Loot Bar is that they are trustworthy and offer 24-7 live support. Other creators like Dukaja, Jello Impact, Superatom, Mujin, and Tevat Times have endorsed and used this product themselves, including both Vixen and myself. Just use the link in the description to get another discount on top of the already cheaper prices at purchase. Thank you Loot Bar for sponsoring today's video, and now, let's dive in. Hey guys, and welcome back to Genshin Interact. In today's short little video, we just thought we would talk a little bit about Sethos, the new 4-star that's going to be coming up maybe in 4.6 or 4.7, and just kind of give our thoughts on what we kind of think he will bring to the table. Now, we don't really know anything specific about his kit. They haven't shown us anything from the live stream about that. But while I was watching the live stream, I was able to catch a glimpse at his side profile in a certain cutscene, and it looks like he's wielding an Electro Vision. Now, that could be out for debate. I know pe some people have said he's going to be a Geo character, and I can see that because he does have some kind of yellow orangish themes going on in his character design. Then I've also heard some people say, oh, he's going to be Dendro. And they said that because he does have like a green earring, and he, he also, his eyes are green. So I'm like, okay, I can see that too. But when I saw the what looks like an Electro Vision on his right hip, I feel like it's pretty much undoubtedly a fact that he's going to be an electro character and so i think that'll be kind of cool we haven't had a new four star i think since what dory i don't know what what are your thoughts vixen on i guess since we don't know about his kid like we don't we don't have anything so it's complete pure speculation on our side but what would you want out of a new four star electro character well uh, first i think i want to i do want to touch on what you were talking about and like what his kit will mo like at least from just a very brief analysis of what characters have been and what we probably maybe could expect. Now, I think a lot of the times, you know, we need to look at other characters in the first place. The most recent Electro four-star characters to come out have been Kuki and Dory. These are some of the Sumeru characters and specifically the Electro characters. Now, you did have Sino coming out as well. Now, Sino revolves around Hyper Bloom damage and Aggravate damage as well. So a lot of people are going to be focusing on doing either, you know, an Aggravate build or, you know, an extra, just throwing in some Hydro and getting an interesting, you know, Hyper Bloom team. Now, alongside of this, though, we have Dory, who is basically a healer, if you will, for that. Now, she's not necessarily the best at it, which is why a lot of people tend not to use her and her a lot of her stuff is just kind of different but she is a healer so that is her main role uh the other character that came out was kuki now looking at kuki is obviously focused on a healer as well but it was more consistent damage so we have two previous healers with the four stars and in general the last character we had that was a an actual dps was razor which is a very very long time ago considering you know just how the game has progressed at least four four stars. You know, obviously we've gotten Raiden but, and uh, Sino, but at least Razor's been a hot minute. So I, I think maybe possibly an idea of maybe, you know, a damage dealer. So maybe a DPS. We've gotten Heizo. Uh, we've gotten some other characters that are, you know, four star and Gaming. So there's your Pyro and your Anwo characters that are DPS characters. I'm wondering if maybe the Electra is trying to scoot in and maybe give themselves a four star DPS character that's not physical based like Razor is. Yes, I totally, totally agree with that 100%, and that's that's my opinion on it as well. I want Sethos, at least what I'm looking for, is for him to be a four-star DPS, and I feel like it just makes the most sense. It's just like you've pointed out, with all the past four-star Electro characters, surely it can't be another healer, right? I mean, we already have good ones in that, like Kuki. And yeah, it just makes sense. I'd want a DPS because, like you said, he would be the first one that's not like you know, tied to something else. Like, Raz for Razor, it's physical. Like, you can do Electro Razor, and it can be pretty good, too. But he has also got that physical side to him. It's not like he gets an infusion or anything. Maybe, but maybe that'll be Sethos. And see, that's what I'd want. 
you know, just throwing him in at like an aggravate team, basically four star Sino. I I feel like that'd be pretty cool, and it just it just makes the most sense. But looking at one other thing, I did want to talk about in this video. We learned this from the live stream that we'll be getting a lot of new areas in just south of Fontaine. We're going to be getting Remuria, as well as this uh, like island right above it, and some other cool things. That's not really mainly what I want to talk about. What I wanted to talk about that is tied to, and the reason I bring it up is the fact that after the version 4.6 update. And this is especially relevant for new players. As long as you have completed Archon Quest Prologue Act 3, called Song of the Dragon and Freedom, a teleport waypoint will be automatically unlocked near what's called Petrichor in the south of Fontaine. Now, from what I've seen, Petrichor is just the name of the island that's above Remuria. So when that new region comes out, it's going to be mostly look like, from just overhead view, it's going to mostly look like water, and there's going to be an island in the middle. That's Petricor, and so that'll have its own statue, but just really close to it, looks like on the west side, is going to be a teleport waypoint that will also unlock, and you can immediately get to that area right after finishing the Mondstadt story. So I think that'll be pretty cool, and that kind of, you know, reminds me, you know, in the past, uh, back at 4.0, we had the Realm of Fire Kurt opened up a teleport waypoint for new players after completing this same exact Archon Quest Prologue, right? So new players essentially at this point will get two new waypoints after they've completed the Mondstadt story. So I think that's going to be very, very good for them. Not just because, say, a new player wants Arlecchino and they'll have to get over here to get the boss materials and the weekly boss material from Arlecchino herself, but it's also just a nice avenue to open up a lot of other exploration benefits and just a whole different vibe because, I mean, Fontaine and Remuria, that's a totally different look and exploration experience than of course Mondstadt right so I think that'll be very cool what are your thoughts on that Vixen I think always adding a new area is always extremely fun I mean obviously with looking at the different areas we've gotten in Mondstadt obviously we have Dragon Spine and then the Chasm that came out uh, a little bit later but it did come out uh, during a different time with leeway so leeway happened and then inazuma and then it opened back up with chasm but then obviously inazuma also had its own kind of place which is tarasuna kind of in a different area you could also talk about sanganomiya as well being an extra little area that's a little different than the rest tarasuna as well as uh, i th believe one of the other sarah island as well but there's a lot of you know interesting things that were always happening in Inazuma. Sumeru, obviously, you have the desert and the entire just underground maps that happened with both of those. So a lot of very interesting things with a lot of like special case areas. And so I'm extremely hyped for what Fontaine has to bring. I've extremely liked the vibe that Fontaine has brought so far. And so I'm extremely excited to see what this not only just a little island that's a little bit above it, the Petrichor area, but I think the underwater expansive area is going to be extremely fun. I think a lot of the things that it's going to open up, the connection between Sumeru and uh, Fontaine is going to be a little bit more uh, grayed out, so it's not necessarily black and white, like there's not this huge difference. I think there's going to be a little bit more of a shading in between, and that we'll kind of see with Sino Story Quest, as well as the continuation of the main story quest, the Archon Quest, in terms of what's going on in Fontaine. Well, that's everything we've got for this week. We have enjoyed looking over some new character ideas and looking at Sethos and what he could possibly do. Hopefully, we'll get some stuff in the future looking at Chloron and possibly as well Sijuan being some of the new five stars as well that might be coming out in the future with 4.7 with this idea. But, you know, in general, we are excited to see what this brings and we can't wait for 4.6 to be here in the next week. We hope that you guys get the polls that you guys have wanted. And once again, that's everything we've got for this video. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.